Good morning everybody. Uh, are you hearing my sound okay? Yes, coming fine, sir. Okay, good. Uh, so it is the first lecture of the semester. Uh, this is the operating systems course. It's a joint course between uh, CAC 312 and CAC 504. Uh, uh, this year, uh, uh, we will be doing lectures together. The lecture times are uh, Monday, 10.30 to 12.30. And Tuesday, again, 10.30. But I, I, was, I was informed that uh, there, is a, uh, there is an overlap between some of the graduate students' uh, courses between this class and the uh, 503 maybe I don't know so they asked me to to to move my Tuesday lectures from 10 30 to 11 30 so Mondays Mondays will be can I write it here no here yeah maybe this one so let me get this okay I don't know how do I get this one. My other, okay. Let me open this with the other touch. Okay. This one didn't work either. Okay, let me open this using my trusted old age. Okay, Mondays 10.30 to 12.30. And Tuesdays, I like to move my class to 11.30 to 12.30. Are there any objections? How many people are there in the class, in the, in the, in the lecture now? There are, there are 126. Oh, this is a record number. Okay. So out of 126, nobody has objected. I don't see any objections. Are there any objections? Uh, uh, Ilhan, do you see any objections? No, I don't. Okay, so Tuesday lectures will be 11:30 to 13:30, okay? So this is the this is the lecture plan now. Okay. Ilhan, could you tell this to uh, Osman so that he can update the schedule on the website sure i can yes. okay good okay so that that's that's one thing to handle so we solved it i hope all the problems are solved is this easy in this lecture in this class throughout the semester um uh, okay i i forgot to i forgot to turn on my closed captions where are my closed captions here they are Okay, it works. So, uh, let's move on then. If I could find my mouse pointer here, it is. Okay, so um, for those of you who, who don't know me yet, my name is Yusuf Sinan Akgül, and this is my email address, and this is my uh, phone number, and uh, we have two we have two um, uh, teaching assistants in this class. One of them is Ilhan Aytutuldu. You see him now. I think he turned on uh, his camera. Thank you, Ilhan. And the other one is Gizem. Uh, Ilhan will be the main TA for this course. Gizem uh, will be helping us uh, from time to time. Uh, she will be grading some of the homeworks. Okay. Uh, so this is important. 
uh, all the material about this course, all the homeworks, all the class material, slides, uh, announcements, everything, okay, will be kept on our model page, on our Teams page, okay. Uh, our model page uh, is at this address, take a note of it. Uh, also, our Teams page, you know our Teams page, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Uh, I will be keeping uh, some of the files on the Teams page. For example, for today's lecture, I think, let me, let me show this now. Okay, this is our Teams page. Let me go to Pages. Pages. Okay, so this is our Teams page. And under this file section, I have added the, the syllabus of this course, the syllabus that I am currently showing it uh, right now, showing right now. And the other things are the, the slides from the book. Okay, so I added this to the um, to the uh, Teams page file section. Okay, and we will be uh, sharing this kind of stuff with you, either with the uh, either with the Teams page mechanisms or the or the model. Okay, one of them. Moodle is again uh, for those of you who did not use Moodle before with our page. Okay, when you say uh, when you type that address or when you make a search on the web, gives a technical university a, a, a computer engineering model. Okay, you get this. Okay, so you need to log in. And if you don't have a login name, you, you fill in this application form. Okay, and they will they will give you a user name. And you log in. And you will see your classes li uh, listed uh, these are my classes listed but in the first login you will not see all the classes you will need to find all the uh, open classes and you, you you will need to get in so if you get in this operating systems course page you will see this okay there are already how many people I don't know but there are already let me see There are only already 84 participants. So uh, I am seeing 126 participants in my Teams page. So I suggest rest of you, the 40 of you, to go to this uh, model page and uh, subscribe yourself to this to this page. Because uh, I think for some of the homeworks, we are going to use our model pages. Okay. So that's it about the model. Okay, let me continue. Uh, we have a required textbook for this class. It is uh, it is Modern Operating Systems by Tannenbaum and Boss, fourth edition. Okay, and the, the textbook available at uh, Amazon.com.tr, 166 Turkish liras, not much. Okay, so I strongly suggest you buy this book. It's a very good book. It is not that expensive. I know 166 Turkish liras is not is not a small amount of money for for most of the students. But again, this is a, this is a, this is an important book. Buy this book and keep it in your library for the rest of your professional life. Okay. Uh, and as I said, as I showed you before. Uh, the slides of the book is available at the class page, Teams page. Okay, let me see if I can find my book from the bookshelf. Uh, as always, 
There's all ways I cannot find it. Where is it? Yeah, no, sorry, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. But maybe, maybe when I, if I click on this, I think there is a link here. But I don't know how to, how to click on it. Yeah, maybe like that. Okay, no. Don't do that. Maybe do this. Maybe do this. Yeah, okay. So this is how the book looks. What? What happened? So it is more expensive now. I just got this yesterday. I don't know what happened yesterday. I, I think it was 166 Turkish Liras. So it is more expensive. So it is a lot more expensive. I still, I still suggest you to buy this book. Okay. I, I don't know why this is no, I don't understand this yesterday do you, do you think it makes a difference I was logged in to Google yeah it is crazy I don't know I think I, I used the cash from last year or something so I am sorry. It is. It is. It is not one hundred and sixty-six. It is. It is more expensive. Okay. So I I I, I urge you to buy this book. So for the course prerequisites, um, you need to know strong. Uh, you need to have strong skills at uh, C plus plus and Java because we will be assigning uh, homeworks and projects on C++ and Java. Sometimes I will ask you to write Java programs during the exam. Okay, so uh, you need to know that. Uh, officially, there is a prerequisite for this uh, course. One of them is the C programming. The other one is the computer architecture. These are your official uh, prerequisites. I know some of you are uh, some of you are graduate students, you are taking this course because you are out of field, okay? Uh, uh, we did not apply these official prerequisites for you. Uh, you are taking, maybe some of you are taking this course as the first course in this department. Uh, so uh, you, this, these rules do not apply to you, but again, uh, that doesn't mean that you are not going to do the homeworks. You are going to do the homeworks, you are going to answer all those questions. Uh, and for for some reason, if you are an undergraduate student, and if you are taking this course without getting a passing degree from these two courses, then that's a mistake. You shouldn't be taking this course, this co this course. And if you are taking it, and if if if they realize the student student affairs department, if they realize that, if they realize that. Um, uh, you did not satisfy the prerequisites, your course will be dropped uh, even if you have a passing degree. Okay, so some people are typing something in there. I don't read that uh, space, okay? Just use your microphone to ask me questions, okay? I don't, I don't encourage you to, uh, to, to use that chat section, okay? Otherwise, I will be talking all the time. Nobody else is talking. So I am not going to answer any of your questions uh, from the chat area. Okay. So Bilal, what, what are you saying? Bilal Bayraktar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the book you was looking uh, the global edition one, not the fourth edition, I suppose. Maybe it can change the price. Yeah, so global edition is the cheaper one, right? So let me make a search on it. I am making a search.
I was surprised yesterday actually. I I I did the same thing with the Chalayan bookstore, okay? Chalayan has it. Okay. Operating systems I I saw that it is expensive there. Yeah. So the global edition I saw that it's it is it is 245 I thought oh, okay this is expensive than yet last years then I checked Amazon and I saw it Amazon it is 160 so I was surprised why why Chalayan is more expensive so it looks like Chalayan is more Chalayan is cheaper okay so it is not it is not that expensive for two two two two two kilograms and 2.2 into 2 kilograms book. Yeah, it's just per gram. It is not much. Okay, let's go back to my slides back. Okay, so requisites are like that. Okay, so Özcan Ç Geçkin, you you you you you like to say something? Ozan, sorry, Ozan. O zaman what do you say? Uh, sir, <coughs> the reason the price of the book increased yesterday because there are uh, only two books in stock in mm. Amazon. Well, I, I, I think they have connection. They will bring more if you buy more. Okay. Because it's a very popular book. Everybody studies this book. Okay, good. So the homeworks, uh, we are going to use G++ compilers to compile your homeworks and the projects. And you are going to do this on the provided virtual machine. We are going to provide you a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine, okay, an Ubuntu machine, and it will be a fresh machine. And you are going to pro compile and run your all of your programs on this virtual machine. This way, we are going to eliminate any environment problems, environment compatibility problems between your environment and the graders' environment. Because there are more than 120 people in this classroom, and I have only one and a half TAs, okay? We cannot do stuff uh, specific for each of you. Do that and that and that that. Instead, we are going to use the same. Okay, uh, I think I, I was disconnected. So the more than 120 people in the classroom we cannot uh, we cannot sp uh, grade your uh, homeworks specific for each person differently so what you we need to do is you do all of your homeworks on this virtual machine of course you prefer whatever whatever you do i mean you do your development anywhere you like but before you submit you verify that everything works it compiles and it runs on our virtual machine if it doesn't run we are not going to email you back and ask you to make it right, okay? If it doesn't run, if it doesn't compile, then you will not get any any grades from that homework, okay? And we are going to post some homework submission rules, the, the names of the files and the places of the files and everything, and you are going to follow those rules strictly, okay? As I said before, more than 120 people we cannot deal with specific problems that's too much work this is the grading uh, uh, grading weights approximately okay it is approximate as follows okay the midterm will be uh, online for now okay uh, final will be on site for now, okay, because we don't know how this virus thing uh, develops. 
maybe if the things go right, we may do the uh, midterm uh, on site too. Okay, and homeworks and the projects will be 30% of the course. Okay, and uh, depending on the uh, depending on the developments during the semester, the midterm could be a project too. I may assign you a project like I did last year, and that might be your midterm. Okay, so we are going to make that decision uh, uh, uh, during the semester. But for now, it looks like it's going to be online exam. Okay, and the grading and the homeworks, uh, uh, th these are the rules. You need to submit all the homeworks. You need to submit all the projects, whatever we are going to give you. If you submit less than 75% of the... Again, I am, was disconnected. I am back. If you submit less than 75% of the homeworks, then you will get a grade of VF from this class. Okay? So uh, VF uh, means that you have failed because you did not do a sufficient amount of work for this course. Doesn't matter what you get from the midterm or the finals, you're going to get this grade. Okay, and the homeworks are due by the described uh, date on our homework uh, documents. And you are allowed to submit your homeworks late, but every day 10% of the maximum grade will be deducted from your homework grade. And after five days, your homework will not be accepted. Okay. Of course, there might be some problems preventing you from submitting your homework uh, on time. And usually uh, there are people like that because this is a very crowded course, more than 120 people. In that case, just send me an email saying that uh, I cannot submit my homework on time because of this and this and this and if I find your excuse as a, a valid excuse then I will usually we will give you some extra time okay and those kind of cases are like family emergencies health emergencies some personal emergencies okay so we try to work it out with you your birthday uh, your friend's uh, uh, birthday party, uh, uh, very important uh, meeting with your old uh, uh, friends uh, are not good excuses. Okay. Uh, exams, again, two exams, final exam and the midterm exam. Midterm exam will be tentatively eighth week of the semester on Monday. So it looks like, let me see. So this is first, second, fifth, fifth. Okay, this is fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, maybe, maybe 19th of April. Okay, this is tentatively, this is the exam date. But we are going to talk about this at the beginning of April, maybe the, the second week of uh, uh, Second week of April, we are going to talk about this and we are going to make a decision together on the midterm exam date. Attendance is part of the classwork. You have to attend and we are going to take attendance. There is no exceptions. Okay. Uh, if you do not, if you do not uh, show attendance more than 70% of the class, if you miss more than 30% of the classes, you will get a grade of NA from this course. Of course, uh, uh, as the regular, regular, regular, regularization says, our student 
code book says uh, if you have taken this course before and if you got a grade of FF not NA or VF FF then you don't have to satisfy this rule okay so if you fail this course with a grade of FF then you don't have to satisfy this rule but I suggest doesn't matter how many times you have taken this course always attend the course always listen to what I am saying and I always ask questions okay if you are not asking questions then if you are not understanding what I am talking about okay uh, all the homework submissions and announcements will be made either during the class okay whatever I am saying during the class uh, it is part of the classwork and you need to know it okay otherwise we may do some announcements at the Moodle page or the teams page those are our class pages our class pages are Moodle pages or the Moodle page or the teams page okay and the homeworks will be announced at the class pages and uh, homeworks will be submitted at the class pages they will be announced at both pages not at both pages, either Moodle or Teams. Okay. Okay, good. Of course, as always, we have honor code with this uh, uh, course. Whatever you do, either it is homeworks, quizzes, exams, projects, whatever it is, you should not misrepresent someone else's work as our as your own okay uh, if i ask you to do something you are supposed to do it yourself not even a line of work line of single line of code from somebody else uh, an idea from somebody else is not acceptable okay those will be considered as cheating and we are very serious about this okay and if we see these kind of situations are happening we have our ways of dealing with them so i hope none of you will be in this situation <coughs> throughout this uh, course throughout the semester so if we see it we are not going to let it go okay we will take action and that, that action usually for the students they say that it is a little bit harsh but as i said before for 120 students we have to do something otherwise I mean I cannot let somebody get away with that kind of a behavior if I if I see it okay unfortunately there are <clears throat> although some advantages with this online teaching stuff okay there are many disadvantages one of the disadvantages is dishonest students okay by cheating they they they think that they have some advantage over the honest students they they pay other people to do their homework okay they uh, rent people to do their homework or exams and etc <coughs> okay uh, of course nobody wants them uh, to do this kind of stuff but i know it happens okay i have my confirmations I've talked to people, I have talked to students. Uh, I know this is happening in Turkey and our university too, okay? And we will try to, as we will try our, our best not to have this kind of situation because this is a very important course actually because you have your knowledge from your first and second second year of this, uh, uh, this, this, this department. Uh, you are very good at programming. <clears throat> you are very good at uh, uh, your computer hardware okay now using this knowledge you are going to study operating systems okay that's what you're gonna do so it will be operating systems is going to be very important for your professional life also it will be a very good opportunity to study a large piece of code very large piece of code maybe the largest piece of code that you're going to study in your life okay don't <clears throat> don't waste this opportunity try to make it uh, most of it 
Uh, so don't try to let anybody do your homework or do your projects uh, for you. Do it yourself. That way you will learn the most. And finally, this is the stuff. This is the material. Finally, this is the material. You have a question? Somebody has a question? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Hey, how many homeworks do you plan to give to us? Four or five. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so these are the topics that we are going to cover. Okay. The first, I think this is going to take maybe two, more than two weeks. General introduction. We are going to make a summary of the whole semester actually with this general introduction. Okay. We will talk about processes, memory management, file systems, input, output, and etc. After that, you will have a good idea of what an operating system is. Well, actually, you have a good idea of what an operating system is, but you will have a good idea of what operating systems is as far as I am concerned. Okay. The, the way I think about operating systems and the way you think about operating systems are now a little bit different uh, as expected. So after this general introduction, you will know what I mean when I say operating systems. Okay. After that, we will start from the very basic soft operating systems, from the processes and the threads. Okay. And then memory management, file systems, input, output, etc. And if you have time, of course, I'd like to talk about this virtualization, then the security, and maybe that locks a little bit at the end. Okay. So you might think that with the four hours a week and the whole semester, 14 weeks, are we going to cover just these four topics? Yeah, I mean, that I mean, even even all that time will not be won't be enough. These these are very deep, very detailed, and historically very rich areas. There are many things to talk about, but each time when I talk them, and you're you're supposed to read your your book too, you're supposed to read your book and uh, watch lots of. Uh, YouTube videos about the history of the operating systems and the computers. Okay, you will realize that really this is just an introductory book, the introductory course about the operating systems. Operating systems are much broader than uh, what we assume usually. Okay, so that's about uh, all the information I like to give you for this course. And uh, if there are any, if there are no questions, I will start doing the regular lectures now. Are there any questions? And I was wondering why this is, my draw board doesn't work. Maybe it will now. Okay, if there are no questions, then I will I will start Where is my book? Okay I think my draw board worked. I need to export this to a PDF document now. Okay, good. So, open this with drawboard.
Okay, so um, let's start from the beginning. Okay, try to define the operating system. What's an operating What's an operating system is, etc. But usually, it is very difficult to define such complex stuff. Instead of defining it directly, operating system is such and such. We try to tell you, explain why we use operating systems. Because operating systems are complicated. For most people, they are like magic, okay? They don't understand them, okay? And the, the people who don't understand them is usually, I mean, they are not regular people. It's system administrators, computer scientists. Usually, when, when you say operating system, everybody has a different answer. Maybe they are right because there are so many different versions of operating systems, okay? And they are very complicated, actually. Operating systems are piece of software okay that's that's that's definitely true hardware is not part of the operating system operating system uses the hardware but it is not hardware it's a piece of software but it is very complicated okay why operating systems are very complicated because the computer systems that we use are very complicated okay when you try to talk about a simplest computer it has many components, many hardware components. It has the terminal, it has the keyboard and the mouse and the Ethernet and the, uh, the wireless and that kind of stuff. To be able to use all of that hardware within your program, the programs that you write, is going to take you lots of knowledge. And nobody in this world can satisfy that kind of a knowledge. It is very difficult. Okay. Here is an example from the book. If you write a simple hello world program in C, maybe at most eight lines of code, okay, that translates to more than one million lines of assembly code, okay? Why is it so much? Because there are many libraries and there are many communication routines with the uh, uh, screen and there are many communication routines with the, within the operating system and etc. So that means that without getting any help from the operating system or from the libraries, my task would be very, very difficult. Nobody is going to write such complex code without the help, okay? And the operating systems, uh, they, they take care of this kind of uh, complexities for you and my job becomes easier okay we didn't tell you what an operating system is yet okay so uh, we are still talking about why we are studying operating systems uh, here it say that studying operating systems is uh, learning how to deal with this complexity and dealing with complexity we talked this many many times before okay we talked this many many times before we use this technique a lot, abstraction, okay? We cannot, as human beings, we cannot keep lots of details in our head while we are thinking. We like to abstract away the details of the things that we talk about. We say that if I have a data structure, for example, if I have an uh, uh, AVL tree, right? AVL tree. When we talk about an AVL tree, it is a complex structure. Rotations and insertion and deletion and th those are complex. All I say is that I add an element, I remove an element, I make a search in the AVL tree. So these three operations abstract away all the details about the structure of this AVL tree, which is a complex structure. We use the same idea with the operating system, okay? We have abstractions, operating systems abstract away the details of the hardware that we are using. Details of how to use an ethernet uh, device. Details of how to use, a, a, a, a, a, for example, the, a pen like this, okay? It's a very complex device, but I use it very, very easily, okay? That's one thing that we, that one technique that we deal with this complex stuff. An operating system uses this idea many, many times. Also, the second one is modularity. We don't write 
Usually, our uh, modern operating systems, they are composed of many lines of code. In the latest versions of Windows, there are 80 million lines of code. 80 million lines of code. It is not that small, right? And it's a complicated code too. 80 million lines of code. Without the modularity, without the abstraction, you cannot design and build some the, these kind of structures, 80 million lines of code. So modularity will be important and we'll talk about it a lot. A lot. And again, nobody wrote the Windows, Pro, Windows uh, uh, uh, operating system in one night. It took them more than, I think the first version of Windows was 1989 maybe, no, maybe 1988, maybe 1990, I don't know, I think like this, okay? If it is 1990, now it has been more than 30 years since they started working on this operating system. They iterate, okay? They come up with a version, after they get their uh, lessons from the field, from the users, from themselves, they say that, okay, this part of the operating system is lacking, we are going to improve it, yeah, let's improve it. And after that, they say that, okay, we have now USB 3.1, okay, type C. We need to add drivers for it, and these drivers are causing problems with the rest of the operating system. Okay, now now uh, the, the virtual machines are no more popular. We need to add more stuff to it, etc. So iteration is very important, okay? So when we talk about operating systems, we will keep these three methods in mind. We will talk about the abstractions. We will talk about the modularity, modules of the operating system. And importantly, we will talk about the history of the operating systems a lot. History is going to be uh, uh, history is going to be uh, very very important. I mean, doesn't matter what you are studying actually. I mean, if you are studying sociology, psychology, economy, or the computer science, to understand what is happening, why it happened, you need to go back to the history. What did they do at the beginning? Okay, why do we have this political situation in Turkey right now? It is mostly because of the history. You go back to 1960s, 1950s, 30s, okay, 1900s, okay? You study history and you understand what's going on in Turkey now or in the world now or in the Middle East. And we are going to do the same thing with the operating systems too, okay? When they invented vacuum tubes, when they have invented the transistors in 1950s, okay, that's when we first have the real operating systems. The decisions they made during those days had affected us a lot, okay? Uh, in fact, most of the ideas that we use for the operating systems, they were in invented in 1960s, actually. Really, 1960s. Most of the ideas were there in 1960s. And when we had better machines, when we had uh, more memory, more disk space, more capable uh, uh, CPUs, then we have implemented these ideas even better and better and better. Okay, so iteration is important, history is important. We will talk about uh, uh, operating systems history a lot. And uh, the history will tell us why we are doing this and this and not that. Okay, good. So why we are studying operating system is this. first. We need to understand what operating system is, okay? Second, by studying this operating system stuff, technology, we will have a good chance of understanding such complex systems. If I have, if I have a complex system as large as 80 million lines of code, okay, then that means that I am making some progress towards my career in the uh, computer engineering uh, area. Good, any questions so far? Any questions? Of course, your other purpose is without getting a passing degree from this course. Nobody will give you a diploma from this department. Uh, that, that, that's the other thing. Okay, so 
let's look at what an operating system is. Okay, before we say what's an operating system, let's talk about what operating system does. Okay, it does two things. Okay, these are the important things. This is the first one. This is the second one. Okay, piece of software that what we said. Operating system is a software that abstracts the computer hardware through interfaces. Okay, abstracting away the hardware details. And the second one is managing the resources such as the processes and the memory and the timers and etc. Okay, these are the two main, these are the two main things, okay, that we use operating systems. Abstracting away the computer hardware because they are so complicated and we are managing the sources, resources. A computer nowadays is a very small device, but it is it has it, it includes some very complicated uh, uh, sub components, okay, such as processes and the memory, etc. And somebody has to manage these. If you don't manage them, then there will be a chaos and you won't be using your computer efficiently and in fact in a few minutes your whole system will crash so they have to be managed very very carefully okay so these are the two things i think i'm out of time for the first part of this lecture for today i will take 10 minutes of break uh, after the break if you have any questions i will take your questions then we will continue talking about these two topics okay Let's take 10 minutes of break. Let's be here around 11.31. Bu 
mükafam yedi. O ayakları şu üst bacak. O yüzden mi koymuş? Hı hı. Aa, atayım mı? Yok, pasta sütük koyacağız dengeli. <gülüyor> ben öyle yapıyorum. <gülüyor> Aa, şey var. Güvenin oradaki tahta şeyi getiriyor. Ya ben o boş odalarda var sandım. Baktım ama onlarda da dur, yok. Dur dur. Boşuna buraya koyalım. Yarın ki yapmasın. Dersin Gülay abla çok zannetmiş onu. Baktım ben geçen de sütük odalar da onda. Hayır yok yok güvenin orada var. Güvenin orada değil çok da görmüyorum. <gülüyor> ben de değil valla onlar niye orada? <gülüyor> Yusuf Hoca yaşlarmış ha? Ha? Yaşlı. <gülüyor> tamam yarım değil mi?
o şimdi şey yapmadan önce olmaz. What? Better. Okay, that's it, eh? Okay, hello again. Let's talk about these two stuff. Uh, abstraction and the uh, uh, management of the resources. Okay. Uh, the first operating systems, we say that it hides the messy details of the underlying hardware. Okay. Uh, remember what I told you, 80 million lines of code. You know where the most of the lines go within the operating system for 80 million lines of code? Can you guess what part of the operating system has the most number of lines of code? Drivers. Exactly, drivers. What's a driver? Driver is a piece of software that deals, that works as an interface between the operating system and the hardware, okay? So using a hardware is not an easy thing, okay? Because think about the USB devices that you can have, okay? You may have you may have USB flash disks, okay? You may have um, cameras, microphones, uh, uh, USB-based communication devices, your screen sometimes. There are literally thousands of different devices that you connect your, uh, uh, uh, uh, that you can connect through the USB. Okay, each one should have an interface program. Each one should be understood and that uh, understanding is done by the driver, okay? So without the operating system help, I cannot possibly use all of these devices. If I don't ha get help, all I can do is maybe I can write program for a specific device, specific hard disk and no, no, no other hard disks. So we need operating system help to to to to to to to deal with the context of the underlying hardware. Okay. So remember how we write our C programs? There are literally hundreds of different hard drive technologies. Okay. Each one works differently, and I cannot know uh, how they work for each of them. In C, all of all I can do is I say open a file, and the file name is uh, test.txt. That's it. That's what I do. Okay. This open function, 
it will translate to a system call, okay, operating system call, and the operating system opens that file for me. And opening that file is a very complicated thing actually, but I don't care. As a user, as an operating system user, what I do is I just make this system call. That's it. So this this uh, this this this task of hiding all the messy details of the underlying hardware is done by the operating system. Okay, and it, it, the operating system it, it presents users with a resource abstraction that is easy to use. Opening a file is as easy as making a system call with the file name and possibly with the permissions. Okay. And for me, it extends or virtualizes the underlying hardware. What do I mean by this extending or virtualizing the underlying hardware? Okay. Underlying hardware may not be a disk. Underlying hardware may not be a solid state drive. It could be a network drive. Okay. But I still think it as a disk file okay my disk space could be somewhere on the web on the network still i am thinking it as a file on a desk okay so this virtualizes the underlying hardware for me and it is done by the operating system so the first task of the operating system main task of the operating system is hiding these kind of complicated details from the user so that the user can write their programs in a convenient way. All we do is just open the file, read data from the file, write data to the file, and close the file. That's it. It is as simple as, it is as simple as uh, a technique that can be teachable to a first year computer engineering student, right? Uh, in your first year programming course, you learned how to open and close files, right? So it is as simple as that. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the first thing. Okay, this is a picture that kind of shows uh, the idea. Okay, operating system is a piece of software that sits between your applications and the hardware. Okay, your applications and the hardware. GCC is an application, your C shell is an application. Okay. Your uh, X window uh, system is an application, or let me put, let me make this larger. Let me make this larger. This is my operating system again. Or my A dot out is an application. Okay. So operating system sits between the applications and the hardware. Okay. It abstracts the uh, hardware. It provides protection and manages the resources. Actually, these two things are the same thing. Providing the protection and managing the resources are the same thing. Okay, so this picture is nice, but some people understand this picture in a wrong way. What do I mean by this? Okay, let's say I have written a program a dot out. Let me let me let me show you a program. Okay, okay. I think I have written a program last night just to show you how to do. Was it in test? Was it in OS? Yeah. No, it is not there. Where is it? Is it in CP test? Oh, I understand. Uh, okay, work. Let me do this. Okay, CD classes. Is it here? Yeah, okay. Test dot C. Okay. Very simple code. It doesn't do much. Okay, you see it right now. I have two local variables. Okay, I have I have two local variables, i and k. i is zero, k is i plus some some magic number, and I make a system call exit minus one. That's it. I did not. I forgot to write our uh, stdio uh, uh, include, but doesn't matter for C. It compiles it anyway. Okay, I think I compiled it using the minus s. Yeah, we have minus. Yeah. 
I did not compile it to produce the ADAT out, but I compiled it to, I gave, it gave me a warning message, said that you did not include the, you did not include the stdlib.h, but that's okay. It produced that S file anyway. Let's look at the dot S file. So to see the assembly. So here is the main, here is the call for the, call for the exit here, okay. Do you guys see my uh, screen okay? You see my screen, right? Am I moving too yes. fast? Am I moving too fast? Sometimes uh, there are some screen refresh problems. Does, does, does everybody see my screen okay? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Um, so this is the this is the code produced by my compiler. It says that okay, here it is. Move zero to this location. This stack pointer minus eight is my I, I guess. And then <clears throat> move the value of this location to my register then add this number with this uh, decimal number 532 and uh, move this one to stack pointer minus four this is k and then move minus one to this register and call this exit routine that's it so when i run this program these are the instructions, right? These run on the CPU. Is that right? These run on the CPU. But when I look at this, uh, when I look at this picture, this is my A dot out, right? My program. It looks like for my program to run, it needs to go through, it needs to go through operating system. But my instructions, they are executed by CPU. How does this work? So this picture is not, <clears throat> should not be taken as a literal layer of software. I mean, my instructions, they don't go through operating system all the time. Okay. My instructions here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, they all are executed on the CPU directly without operating system intervention. Okay. When I do this call, exit call. Okay. Now I will make a call to the operating system. Now I operating system will come in and it will do something because I don't know as a programmer, I don't know how to exit from a program. It is up to the operating system. Okay. Operating system knows how to terminate a, a program. It has to do something. It has to cancel out some of the tables, process tables. It has to update some of the other tables in my operating system and etc. Okay. So when I say that, okay, most of the time I am using my CPU directly. I am using my memory directly. See, all of these statements, they say that write zero to this stack address right so i am writing my value to the memory directly without any intervention from the operating system okay without any intervention from the operating system so when you read this picture read it that way most of the time i have direct access to the cpu and the memory okay but sometimes if i do some bad stuff let's say let's say uh, let's say in my program, in my program, I like to disable the interrupts. Disable interrupts. Okay. How would you disable the interrupts in on Intel platforms? I don't remember now. Let me let me try to figure that out. Uh, push Q, Intel push Q. Let me let me find a nice Intel push Q. So I am going to find a site 
that talks about okay instruction set i found the instruction set okay let's say disable I think this one doesn't doesn't cover all the instructions in here. No. Okay, maybe this one. So these are the interrupt stuff. I am trying to find the interrupt. Okay, disabling the interrupt is you need to call this int instruction. And when you call this int instruction with some parameters, they, that will disable the interrupts. Disabling interrupts is something critical. As a regular program, I should not be able to uh, have access to it. If I call disable interrupt instruction that I showed you right now, it will be executed on the CPU. Okay, so if I disable all the instructions, all the interrupts of the whole operating system, all the whole computer, no other program will respond to keyboard requests, mouse requests, or the Ethernet uh, data arrivals, and etc. That would be a bad thing. So how is it going to work? What happens if I call this disable interrupt um, instruction in my program right here the operating system will shut you up the operating system will shut me up but yeah well in effect that might happen but but the thing is that i have the cpu i am executing this and this and this and this and if i do if i do let me let me try to just put in my what was the int something okay i don't know the instruction but okay interrupt this okay i am disabling the interrupt now if i execute this one how does the operating system know that i am disabling the interrupt What is kernel mode? We, we, we don't know what kernel mode is. I never told you anything about that. Maybe operating system has, like, by itself, it is interrupt disabled. Operating system is a piece of software. It just sits here, okay? It runs from time to time. But when I have the control, my A dot out will work, okay? It will do stuff. Whenever I need, I will call the operating system. If I don't need it, I will execute my instructions. But if I execute a bad instruction, such as disabling the interrupts, okay, which is a very critical instruction, how does the operating system know that I am doing this bad thing? I get help from the hardware. That's, that's the answer. The CPU says that A dot A, A dot out is trying to execute A dot out is trying to execute a P 
Prelevek. Prelevek instruction. Okay. But a dot out is a regular program. It cannot do that. So it immediately shuts me a dot out and it tells the operating system that somebody is trying to execute an instruction uh, on which they, are, they don't have no access. Okay. So I get help from the hardware in these kind of situations. So the all the things that all the, the, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that okay this picture is nice but you should not assume that all the instructions that I am uh, executing are monitored by the operating system no I am free to use my CPU and the memory but if I do something bad the hardware will let the operating system know that somebody is doing something bad or somebody is trying to do something uh, that they don't have any right to Okay, so without the help from the hardware, operating system by itself will not be very, very uh, uh, useful in this in this case. So uh, let's go back. Uh, what what are we uh, what are we what are we talking about? We are talking about we are talking about an operating system abstracting the computer hardware through interfaces, and we talked about this picture. It's a very nice picture. Okay, my applications here. Operating system sits in between the hardware and the applications, but you should not assume that operating system monitors every movement of my program. No, it is not, because my program is like that. These are the instructions. I move stuff between the register and the memory. I do stuff with the CPU. I do whatever I want, and if I need to, I call my operating system services. Okay. I call my operating system services. That's what I do. But if I do something that I don't have any right to, okay, uh, I don't have any privilege to execute, then in that case, the hardware will interrupt me. The hardware will interrupt me and it will tell the operating system that somebody is doing something bad. And in that case, operating system is going to run. Okay, good. You, you understand this point now? Any questions on this? So understand this question, understand this uh, layered uh, structure, right? Okay. This is not. This is... We said that the operating system is uh, a normal application. How does the hardware know which program to tell that? Okay, there is this uh, this application that tries to uh, execute privileged code. Yeah. Uh, uh, I said that yes, operating system is like a program. How does the hardware know that which one is the operating system? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good answer. That's a very good question, actually. Does anybody know the answer? Sir, maybe the program we want to run in a, a specific directory, so operating system understands according to that. Where, it, where the uh, program we want to run is placed. Yeah, it could. That could be the case. Yeah, that's that's kind of maybe it. But it is not specific to where the program runs on your specific desk because you may not have any desk on your system. For some real time systems, there is no desk. Everything is on the memory. How does the how does the hardware know which one is the operating system? How does the hardware? Well, well, the first thing is this: who is running? Who is running this terminal? Okay, I, as a program, this is my C shell. Okay, remember, this is my this is not C shell, but it is a Bash. Okay, uh, it's like C shell. This one is running on top of the operating system. Who runs this? Operating system runs it. So operating system, it is the operating system that launches this one and this one and this one. So these three or four are started by the operating system. Okay. When your computer first boot ups, the first program to run is the operating system. Okay. Whoever starts the computer has the, has the right to control the other programs. So they tell the uh, hardware that, okay, 
I am running you right now. Whoever makes a bad move, you are going to let me know. Okay? So operating system registers itself with the hardware. Says that, okay. I am the operating system. If somebody runs a privilege instruction, you are going to tell me who is doing it. If somebody is trying to reach out of memory spaces, okay, the spaces that are not allowed to reach, then you are going to tell me. So at the beginning of the system boot up, system start, operating system will tell the hardware how to behave. Okay, so uh, Osama, that was a very good question. And that's the kind of thinking that I like you to follow, okay? Always ask questions, so well, where does it come from? I mean, so how does the operating system do it? The idea is very good. I mean, operating system is like a program. It is no different than a program. It's a process, right? Maybe more than one process. What makes it so different from the other processes, this one? This one, at the beginning, configured my hardware. So the hardware recognizes my operating system processes as special processes, okay? This hardware lets the operating system disable the interrupts. This hardware lets the operating system to kill any applications that they want, okay? So operating system knows the hardware very well. And uh, of course, hardware is very complicated. Hardware is very complicated. Uh, it, it helps us use hardware in an easy way, our hardware as a, a, a, a abstraction. Also, it helps us manage the hardware. Okay, and we are going to talk about it in a few minutes. Good. Any other questions? Okay, then I will continue. So, again, abstract the computer hardware to interfaces. And let's talk about this, managing the uh, resources. Okay. Our computer systems, they, they, they, they, they may look very, very small. Okay. You may assume that they are not complicated, but in fact, they are very complicated. Uh, for now, uh, uh, on our computer systems, there are one or uh, most of the time more processors, CPUs. We have very large main memory. We have our desks, printers, input output devices, etc. Okay. Managing all these components requires a layer of software, the operating system. Management of all of these is not an easy thing. I am not talking about the details of the Hardware. Hardware is very detailed. You need to know all, all the details about the hardware. That's one thing. The other thing is, if I have so many resources, very large resources, this is a very large area, terabytes of space, uh, our main memory, the, the, the, the gigabytes of space, okay, very fast and more than one CPU at the same time, okay. Lots of peripherals, my cameras, my uh, internet connections and etc. Somebody has to manage all these resources. These are my resources. If I don't manage them, okay, if I don't manage them, it will be a chaos. Do you know how many processes I am running on my simple Windows computer right now? I don't know. It is probably hundreds of them. If I open up my task manager, as you see, as you see, these are my these are my processes. How many processes do you see are there? How many processes? There are many of them. I don't know. I mean, at this page, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like ten, twenty-five here, and twenty-five, one. And it looks like I have maybe 10 of them. So it looks like I am I am running more than 100 processes. There are 100 separate programs running on my computer right now. If I don't do the resource management, if I don't tell that 
this process, this is your memory, this is your memory, this is your disk space, okay? These are the devices that you could use. If I don't do this kind of resource management, uh, none of these processes will work in harmony, okay? So it is the task of the operating system to make this resource sharing amongst the processes that I'm running on my computer, okay? And this is a very simple computer, by the way. This is just a laptop computer. I am not talking about the server stuff, okay? I am not talking about the complicated multi-user server stuff. It's a single user computer, okay? And uh, uh, uh, the same situation is valid for your for your uh, uh, cell phone, okay? Whether it is Android or iOS, doesn't matter. You are running many, many processes at the same time. And somebody has to manage all the memory, all the disk space, uh, all the bandwidth that you are using, okay? That's that's what we that's what we talk about when we say managing the components. Okay. This is another this is another picture of the operating system with the other programs. Okay. Usually we show it this way. At the at the bottom we have the hardware. Okay. Then on top of it there is operating system. And then there is this user interface program. What do we mean by user? What do we mean by user interface program? For Windows, it is our graphical user interface between the operating system and us, right? For the for the regular uh, Unix environment, this shell, okay, this shell is my interface. This is a terminal interface. Some people like it better, okay. So all I do in this case is. I type something, I get a result back. So when I type this ls, I ask the operating system, run this program named ls. And the task of the ls is, uh, whoever wrote it, uh, depends on whoever wrote it, okay? It is known. So this is my user interface for the regular Unix environment. So different operating systems has different user interfaces. On top of it, we have our application programs. On top of it, there is this application programs. Okay, so let's look at this part of the picture. This part of the picture says that the whole computer system, including hardware and software, is like this. There is this hardware component, which includes the CPUs, memory, and the disks, etc. They don't have any software on them, okay? And on top of them, we have operating system. On top of it, there is interface. And on top of it, there is application. So the software part is here and hardware part is there. Okay? And let's look at this part. To be used, to, to use this hardware, okay, I have two types of software. One software runs in the kernel mode. What's a kernel mode? Kernel mode is the privileged mode. Okay. Privileged mode means that once you are in uh, privileged mode, you can do anything you like with the hardware uh, and the computer hardware, anything that you like. You can disable the interrupts. You can try to allocate as much memory as you like. You can write the registers of your I.O. devices, anything that you like, okay? So kernel mode is a very powerful mode. That's why operating system runs in the kernel mode, okay? Uh, the the other, other mode is the user mode. User mode is not a privileged mode. Only some set of instructions can be run with the user mode. In the user mode, if you like to run a privileged instruction, that instruction will set a trap, okay? That instruction will, be, will not be executed uh, in the normal way. Your CPU will ask the operating system, your CPU will stop you from running, and it will ask the operating system, it will make a call to the operating system saying that, Somebody is trying to use the privilege mode even though they are not in the privilege mode. 
okay so that's that's the general structure of the operating system this is how we abstract away the details of details of uh, um, uh, hardware okay let's look at this management of the resources stuff okay as i said before our computers are very complicated many hardware okay and each hardware is trying to be useful and each hardware is is is um each hardware is uh, trying to com contribute some resource to the system and it is the task of the operating system to make best use of all these resources so it allows multiple users multiple processes programs to share the resources and coordinate the sharing that's the part of the operating system it is a resource manager okay and usually this resource management is done in two ways okay we call it multiplexing okay we say that how am i going to share my resources between the processes let's say i have a single cpu i have a cpu okay if this is my time dimension let's say i have two processes that likes the that like to use the cpu so what i do is maybe process one uses my cpu from zero to 100 milliseconds then process two uses my cpu from 100 to 150 then process one again use my cpu from 150 to maybe 250 etc so operating system is making this decision okay operating system tells that okay process one is going to use the cpu for 100 milliseconds process two is going to use 1500 milliseconds sorry 500 milliseconds sorry and then process one is going to use for another 100 milliseconds so this management is done by the cpu this is called time multiplexing okay so i am doing this time sharing time multiplexing of the cpu because i have only a single cpu since i have only a single cpu since i have only a single cpu uh, i cannot i cannot use the cpu at the same time between two processes i have to do this time multiplexing there is another form of multiplexing it is called space multiplexing uh, my disk is like this disk is a as the name implies a circular physical device okay and i have these kind of sectors on my desk i'm sorry this is not perfectly circular okay on my desk there are tracks like that i would say that okay this blue track or let me use different colors okay this green track belongs to process one and this red track belongs to process number two so this is called space multiplexing okay so the and we can use some uh, uh, different versions of this multiplexing idea uh, depending on our needs depending on our needs and this is all done by the operating system okay of course as a user as a process one let's say i am process one i may ask the operating system to give me more cpu time or less cpu time okay i may ask it but it is up to the operating system to grant me that cpu time or not okay so it is the task of the operating system to make this decision usually for the processes the processes all of them they say that i need all the cpu time okay whatever your time whatever whatever time you have give me that time 
But if the, C, if the operating system gives the CPU to one of the processes all the time, then I am going to have, then I am going to have problems. Why? Because no other process will run on that system. So again, operating system has to be very difficult about the fairness between the processes. Also the protection. What do, I, what do we mean by protection? We talk about the fairness. It has to be fair between the processes, right? It, it wouldn't let one process run the CPU all the time. All the others will starve. How about the protection? Can somebody tell me what protection is in terms of a process, resource? A process shouldn't access uh, the memory of another process, for example. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The mem memory space or the disk space or the some other resources. So the protection has to be there. Okay. So why would I want to as a process number two? Why would I why would I why would I want to access the memory space of process number one? It could be because because of accidents. I have a bug in my program. Okay, I have a bug in my program. And I am trying to access some other memory location. I am sure all of you got this segmentation faults, right? Segmentation faults. Why did you get the segmentation fault? It is because you are a bad person. You are trying to access somebody else's memory locations. No. Okay. I hope no. Uh, you got it because you write a buggy program. In your buggy program, your program by accident trying to access the memory locations that doesn't belong to you, right? That's what you. That's why you get the segmentation faults. So it is the task of the operating system to provide this protection with the help of the hardware, of course. If you don't get any help from the hardware, then operating system doesn't have any way of providing this protection. Okay, again for the fairness too. Uh, operating system uses the hardware, CPU mechanisms, other protection mechanisms uh, to provide this fairness among the among the processes or among the uh, users. Okay, so that's the second task of the operating system: abstracting away the details of the hardware, also managing the system resources. Two things uh, are done by the operating system, and with the rest of this book with the rest of this uh, uh, course, we will be talking about these two main tasks of the operating system all the way, okay? You might think that, well, I mean, what are, what are we gonna talk about? These are two simple tasks. They, they look simple, but when we uh, go dive into the details, you will see that, you will see that uh, they really need to be studied very, very carefully. Okay, so, that's one way to look at the operating systems. The other way to look at the operating system is this, okay? When I say the operating system, for example, Windows or Linux, for most people, for most people, when I say operating system, graphical user interfaces are included, shells, server, system libraries, and etc. They are all included within the operating system, okay? That's called the wide view. Okay, when you say I have installed Windows on my computer or when I installed Ubuntu on my computer, whatever you have installed is part of the operating system for you. Okay, when I say I have Ubuntu on my computer, okay, is LS part of the uh, window, uh, Ubuntu operating system? Uh, for some people, yeah, because without LS, I wouldn't know. How about how about PS or how about Bash? the shell. Is this part of the operating system? Yeah, they, of course they are. Why not? Okay. Uh, because I installed Ubuntu on my system and these came with the operating system itself. Okay, that's called the wide view. But there is another view. It is a narrow definition. Okay. Often for the operating system computer scientists, operating systems are often equated with the kernel. Whatever runs in the kernel mode is the operating system, they say. Okay? If you are running in the privileged mode, if you are running in the 
pre-leveraged mode, then you are the operating system. And with this book and with this course, we usually mean the narrow definition. Okay, so when I say operating system, it is the piece of code that runs in the pre-leveraged mode, in the kernel mode. So for me, if I go back to this picture, this user interface program, for example, the windowing environment, moving the windows uh, around, etc., or the LS program, or the PS program, or the shell programs, they are part of the user interface program in the user mode, so they are not part of the operating system, only the kernel part. Okay? Only the Is kernel part. Is the difference between Linux and GNU Linux? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. What runs in the kernel mode depends on the operating system. Okay? And Windows and Linux operating systems are very different in terms of what runs in the kernel mode. Uh, kernel mode of the Linux operating system is smaller. Windows is larger. For example, the, the Windows, window management, moving the windows around, opening the windows, closing the windows, etc., right? They are done with the kernel mode with Windows operating system. But for the Linux operating system or the Unix operating system, they are they are run in the user mode, not in the privileged mode. And there are some operating systems, there are some operating system uh, where the kernel mode is very, very, very small. Very, very small. They say that we like to keep the kernel so small that it doesn't include many bugs. Because if you keep your kernel large, it is possible that you will introduce more bugs to your kernel. And having a bug in the kernel is a bad, bad thing. Having a bug, having a bug in the email reader is a bad thing, but if you have a email reader bug, that will crash at most your email reader, right? But if you have a bug in your operating system, that will crash the whole system. And that's not that's not going to be good. Okay? That's not going to be good. Okay? Did I answer your question, Osama? Yeah, in a way. Okay, and other questions? So, uh, this operating system view of narrow definition, whatever runs in the kernel mode is operating system, is the definition that we are going to take. And most of the time, we will call the operating system whatever runs in the kernel mode. Whatever runs in the kernel mode. So, if somebody asks you, a question, what's an operating system? Okay. There are many ways to define it. There's the one way to define it. The piece of software that manages your hardware. Okay. That manages your hardware and that abstract away your hardware details. The other one is whatever runs in the kernel mode. Okay. Maybe you can define it that way. Okay. So... After this short introduction to the operating systems as a general idea, let's look at the history. History is important, as I said before, not only for the operating systems course, okay? It is important for the programming languages, it is important for the theory of computation, it is important for the understanding the political situations in any country of the world. It is important for everything. It is important for the study of art. I mean, if you are studying literature, you need to know where this all these literature inventions come from, who did it first. And that will define you uh, what we are dealing with. So let's study the history of the operating system. What did we say at the beginning? Operating system hides away the details of the hardware, right? So operating systems have evolved with the hardware, computer hardware. So operating systems were very, very different at the beginning. Because the hardware that we that used to that we used to use is, was very different from 1945 to 55. Okay, first of all, these are all <coughs> these are all electronic computers. As you know, there are mechanical computers, and we are going to see some examples of it maybe tomorrow. Okay, these are all like electronic computers, 
and we, we are not going to talk about the mechanical computers. Uh, with the mechanical computers, there are no operating systems. Why? Because they were so, so weak. They don't have enough power to run their own programs, okay? So we are not going to talk about the mechanical computers. So uh, we are going to do this first generation computers and operating systems, second generation, th th third generation, and now our present systems, personal computers and the mobile computers, okay? And mostly, as I said before, many ideas of the operating systems were invented and used in this era, 1960s, 70s. And we will talk about this operating system, Maltics, a lot. Very important operating system, okay? Maltics operating system. It is the ancestor of the Unix operating system, okay? And as you know, Unix is the ancestor of the Linux operating system. And Linux is the most popular of the operate most uh, most popular of most popular operating system of the whole computer history and many ideas that we are using today comes from multics and we will be uh, very careful about in the discussions about this multics okay but for today i think i am out of time tomorrow we will start talking about this history of the operating systems and we will continue from from that on. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow at 11.30. Okay, see you. Hocam yoklama için herhangi bir açıklama yapmış mıydınız? Ben kaçırmış olabilirim belki. No, I did not do any announcement about the... You need to attend the classes. We will take the attendance automatically. If you join the class and if you listened, we, we, we are going to see it. Teşekkürler hocam, kolay gelsin. İyi hocam. Herkese iyi günler. Hocam sanırım kaydı durdurmadınız.